Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. For those of you joining me for the first time ever, my name is Sabouts and if you're returning to my channel for another series, I'd like to welcome you back. Dwarf Fortress is finally here. It is a game I have been wanting to cover for over five years now, ever since I started the channel. One of my all-time favorite video games that I have played in my entire life. I've probably got over a couple thousand hours into Dwarf Fortress. Um, I played it back in 2014. It was actually the last time I played the game. And so I'll be a little bit rusty here in the series, but I've heard that Dwarf Fortress is kind of like riding a bike. Once you learn how to play it, you never really forget how to play it. So hopefully I can show you guys a couple of cool tips and tricks uh, as I play and get used to the game, as well as learning, I'm sure, a bunch of tips and tricks from you guys who have either played the game thousands of hours or even hundreds of hours yourselves, or um, informing me on all of the new changes because since 2014 up to now, it's been five years and so there's been a lot of different changes to the game. But yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Most requested game for me to cover on the channel. And we're finally here. I don't know what took me so long, but I'm glad to, to finally be doing it. So we're gonna go ahead and start playing. I've actually already made a region that I want to play uh, for the series on, I've put together a world. Now, some of you who've been to my channel for a while now, you'll know that I don't normally like just playing games in their sort of vanilla state. I always like modifying or changing the games or adding special challenges or scenarios to try and make it a little bit more interesting. And so this is going to be the Dwarf Fortress Savage Lands series. What I've done to the world that you are about to view is I've made it a, uh, it's a medium sized world. It has a somewhat um, short life. It is only 125 years old. Uh, there's a lot of civilizations in this world. Uh, there is the highest setting of, of wilderness. There's the highest setting of wild, untamed lands, a very high setting for things like forgotten beasts, uh, the, everything is just ramped right up. So it's going to be just a very savage, untamed playthrough. We're going to have a lot of things, a lot of problems we have to deal with as we play along. Now, this is the world here. I actually very much like this map. I generated a couple of maps before I finally settled on this one. Uh, the main thing that drew me to this one was just the overall, uh, the overall layout. Uh, everything's very central. You're not really feeling like by settling in a certain part of the map, you're going to not be able to partake in the festivities that is getting sieged or <laughs> getting attacked by things, having fun. So I, I thought this map was very good for that. Now, I've already actually picked out a location, but I do believe that the location does sometimes change as you're kind of going through it. And the location that I picked, there's always a certain type of criteria that I look for whenever I am looking for an area to settle. And the biggest thing is making sure I've got some soil, I've got a water source, I like to have, um, some flux and I like to have some soil. And so right about here, someplace I was settling. Um, so let me go ahead and actually explain a little bit of what's going on. For those of you that aren't familiar with Dwarf Fortress, it is a um, essentially a fortress building game, hence the name Dwarf Fortress. You're playing as dwarves, you're building a fortress, you're surviving, uh, collecting resources, trying to thrive, trying to fight off um, different enemies in the game. And uh, Dwarf Fortress is, is a little renowned or known for its uh, somewhat uh, rough UI to kind of get used to. Um, it's tricky to navigate and it's, it's very hard to learn, but it's got a very steep learning cliff as I like to call it. But once you learn, 
how to play it. It's it really is. If you're into these types of games, if you like games like RimWorld and stuff, um, games that took a lot of inspiration from Door Fortress, then uh, you would certainly love what is you know pretty much the pinnacle of any type of colony management or building game. The Door Fortress is special because it just does everything in such great detail. It is very enjoyable. It's the reason why I have been able to sink thousands of hours into the game. Uh, throughout the the uh, times I've played it. And so the map that you're looking at right now, this is the world map. And it might look confusing and it might not make a lot of sense, but I promise uh, all these ASCII characters mean something and it's not too important uh, for the beginning. Uh, this is the only time you're ever really going to look at the map. It's mainly just important for settling and building our colony. So over on the left there, you've got your local view. So wherever your cursor is, that's kind of like what you're looking at. Um, the little triangles are like mountains. You've got uh, some green ASCII there, which is like woodlands. Uh, the blue running through it is a river, stuff like that. Here in the middle area, the largest part called the region, you're kind of looking at a, a um, you're looking at the world map, essentially. Rivers, mountains, uh, there's civilizations here. There's all sorts of things. Uh, that are on this world map. Each ASCII character represents something and I won't kind of get into great detail about it. Maybe that could be a series in the future, but uh, just know that there's a lot of information here and uh, it's all important. <laughs> Over on the right, the world map shows the entire world, uh, the caps, the polar caps to the north and to the south. Now, the way the island uh, or the main continent kind of snakes up and is connected, all the different islands and stuff, the main bodies of water in blue, um, the world map is just a blown up version of the uh, region, which is a little bit more detailed. So the local area all the way to the left, that's actually the region you'll be playing in for the duration of the game. And it is the region you're gonna be settling in. So by looking at this area here, we've got the river, we've got some mountains we can dig a fortress into, and we've got a little bit of woodlands to be able to get some wood out of it, maybe harvest some food and get some seeds and such. Now, all the way over to the very far right, we've got some information that's pretty important. This area here is considered a fresh water marsh. It is uh, a temperate temperature. These are important things to know. Obviously, if you're settling in an area that's very cold, it's gonna be challenging, and an area that's very hot could also have its own different set of challenges. You can see it's woodland, which is good, because that means we're gonna have plenty of trees we can cut down. We're gonna need wood in the beginning to make certain things. Vegetation, other vegetation is moderate, so a chance to get seeds, a chance to get berries, stuff that we're going to need to survive early on in the game before we finally have our own industries up and running. And it is untamed wilds. Most of this stuff is going to be untamed wilds because the entire world is untamed wilds. Why I like this location so much, obviously, like I said before, the mountains to dig our fortress in, the river for an early source of water and fishing, the woodlands for the wood, the grass, the seeds, but most importantly, all those things down at the bottom on the right, the sand, the clay, the very deep soil, shallow metals, deep metals, and a flux stone layer. In my opinion, all things that you want to have when starting a proper Dwarf Fortress colony. It's not to say you can't find these things in other locations, it's just that they are more abundant when they're annotated over there. And the fact that we've got all of that stuff here means we should um, have no issue finding the items we need. Now, whether or not we can actually turn it into a way to survive, that's yet to be determined. So this is gonna be our location and we're gonna embark. Now I've already set up the embark so you guys aren't gonna to have to painfully watch all of that. Uh, but I can go through it and kind of show you guys what we've got. And I might have to alter it a bit because this world uh, is a little bit different than when I made this uh, start here. But we've got the first guy here. He is a proficient miner. Our second guy, another proficient miner. Then we have a novice woodcutter Novice Carpenter will actually change uh, both of these um, to adequate since we've got the points. Then we've got an adequate Mason and an adequate Engraver. Down below, we have ourselves a proficient Swordsman. He's going to be the early defense of our colony. Um, 
He's also a persuader, negotiator. He'll make a good leader in the beginning. We'll have him be our general at some point um, and probably leading the colony. And then we've got um, an adequate brewer, adequate cook, adequate butcher. And then we've got an adequate wound dresser, uh, diagnostician, um, which is basically our like doctor dwarf going to be able to do wound dressing and and such um, just very early medical stuff that we might need. So that's the uh, dwarves that I put together for items. I've grabbed two copper picks, an iron anvil, some booze, some plump helmet spawns, all the way down to a bismuth bronze sword. Um, we also got one war dog into the mix, which will be useful and you'll see why when we get into it. I do have 155 points left over. So I think I'll go ahead and grab a little bit more rum because I know that that is probably single-handedly the most important thing in any dwarf fortress colony, alcohol. Dwarves need their alcohol to survive. Without it, they are nothing. So it's critical that we get that in there. Um, I will also take a little bit more food as well. Not as important as alcohol, but worth grabbing. And since we've got one more point left over, we'll go ahead and do that. Perfect. So we can go ahead and name our four and name our group. So why don't we do that? We will uh, do things like I normally do it. So we will go 10 times with random and whatever it lands on is going to be it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Club Cobalt. I like it. Club Cobalt. Okay, so our fortress name is going to be Club Cobalt. And uh, we will go ahead and select that. And the group name, we'll do the the um, same exact thing. So uh, we'll do five this time. One, two, three, four, and five. The Turquoise Key. Okay. I like, there was one called the confusing town. I think it was, and I was, that would have actually been perfect, but the turquoise key, I guess sounds cool, <laughs> but anything with the word confusing trash fire, heaping pile of garbage would have been very appropriate for what this is probably going to become. Um, all right. So we'll go ahead. I'm just going to save that real quick just so I have it. And then we're going to press E to actually do the embark and we'll see what we get once we get in here. Very excited. I'm hoping that we'll have a nice mountainous area we can kind of dig into. I have a, um, actually the cool thing about Dwarf Fortress is everybody always has like there's certain ways they like to set up their forts. I've got my particular way for setting up a fort. And so I'm hoping this area will be suited for it. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidden wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of, oh my God, Bomelles Lemrizen. We couldn't have got the worst uh, nation name. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the saltwater crocodile men get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Ogletmos Club Cobalt Strike the Earth. All right, and we're going to start. The very first thing you do in Dwarf Fortress when you enter the game is press the space bar so you can pause the game or you're going to be in for a rude awakening. And this is our area here. Not bad. Where is our starting dwarves? They're around here someplace. They must be up above. Nah, they're right here. Okay, I was going to say, usually always spawn on the level with them. All right. So we've got the river that runs through. It's actually more like a brook. It runs all the way up and through. Um, looking at the mountain here, um, overall pretty happy with it. What is this? Red sand wall? Okay, do we have any stone exposed? Rock salt? Uh, coal, uh, cobalt light, I guess, which is pretty 
Funny, actually. Calanite, okay. So some stone down here. Jet. Tetrahedrite already right on the surface. All right. And any locations that look like an area I want to dig right into. I mean, this actually doesn't look half bad over here because it's got a water source. This could be walled in. And it would give us a water source we could fish out of. Um, it wouldn't be a clean water source unless we ran water to it somehow, some way. Uh, but overall, I definitely think that this is the area we're going to start building out of. The sand and everything. We've even got oak roots here. Ah, yes, I see. Okay. Oh, this actually goes down right to here. So we might be able to get the brook. We might be able to dig the brook over to here and then dig this down into a well or something. That might be an option for water if we need it. Or we could even put a wall here and use that and start the base here. I actually think I'd much rather have the base kind of come down into here. Yeah, there's a lot of room to build in here. I'm very happy with this. I think we're going to put it here. Yeah, I think we're going to start it right here, actually. I think I like this a little bit more. Let me do that. So let's set up our mining. Now, I usually like to build my bases like i said a certain way uh, my paths i like to have three wide that's so trade caravans can come through doors can pass each other comfortably etc etc so my main hallways are always usually three wide uh, this area here will be where the trade caravan can come into what i'll consider to be a more protected room uh, and an area where they can set up to do trading which will be a five by five area since the trade depot is five by five. Off of this here, we'll make a main hallway that will also be three wide and it's going gonna, uh, gonna go into the main fortress part. Um, over here though is gonna be a barracks. So we'll set a nice little barracks up. And I always put my barracks by the front entrance. Because usually it's bad if you don't. Now this I'm actually going to make a little bit bigger. I'm not crazy about it. And I think I actually want this to be um, in the center. So here's what we're going to do. Um, so this would be three. And I believe if I make them 10 wide. So we'll go. Actually make them like this. Twelve. Nope, it'll have to be wider. And I just want to show you guys what I'm going to do real quick, and then I'll probably do some of this here off camera. But I'll show you guys what I usually like to do. So something like this. And then I can uh, usually do my rooms like this. And I sort of construct everything like that. There's a couple more. There's a little bit more that goes into it, but this is the general layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go off camera here for a bit. I'm going to set the fort up because it's going to take me some time. I like to usually count things out and get all crazy with it. Um, I won't set the whole fort up, but I'll set up the general gist of it. And once you guys see what it is, I'll explain a little bit of why I like this uh, layout. And then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right. So here is the general area here. I've already got the uh, mining dwarves getting to it here, mining it out. It's going to come uh, through this area down into what, where the trade depot is going to be built. 
then going to come into here, which is going to be like a uh, barracks. But in the beginning here is going to mainly just be a staging area for our gear and workshop and everything while we try to get ourselves established. So we'll go ahead and unpause here and let the mining dwarves keep digging the area out. And then we'll get a stockpile set up so we can start moving stuff inside. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and have um, our wood cutting dwarf here cut some trees. And we'll go ahead and just start gathering uh, all the plants that we can gather. Because why not? In fact, you might as well just go ahead and chop down a bunch of trees. So we can get the wood because we know we're going to need it. And now we're going to pull up uh, Dwarf Fortress here. We get this to connect here to our fort. So we can actually see everybody. Okay, perfect. And, uh... Yeah. Alright, so we'll leave that up. Ooh. Perfect. We've already uh, hit some stone here. And what do we got? I think this is rock salt, right? Yeah, so we've got rock salt. We're gonna wanna set up a dumping area at some point. That'll probably be down by the crafting area. We could also build a trade depot if we wanna get that up and running. We've probably got this stuff to do it now. Okay. And we'll set that up here. And we'll build it out of the rock salt. I like it. All right, somebody will get to work on that. If I had a dwarf that actually does that, which I don't. Actually forgot to bring something for cutting wood too. So we'll have to make one of those. We can get that up and running real quickly. Uh, that shouldn't be much of an issue. All right, who could be our architect? I think we'll go ahead and have the Mason do architect work. And we'll want to have a mechanic as well at some point, but we'll wait to see who that is. Who the heck are you? You have no jobs? Can't believe I missed somebody. I guess you could be our mechanic at some point. Or, well, we'll see. We're going to need a farm or two, so it'll probably just be our farm soap. Stuff like that. We'll just have you be that for now. Makes the most sense. The architect here is starting to carry stuff down to the the mine. We're going to want to get our workshops up as well. Um, probably in the beginning here, we're definitely going to want... We're going to want a crafts dwarf shop. We'll uh, just put our workshops wherever we can. Eventually, when we build an actual work area, all of this stuff will get moved. But I'm just going to kind of utilize the space I have. Let me wait till this is all mined out. And the stockpile here will probably... Okay, the trade depot is almost up. We'll probably put... Let's see, let's put a stockpile. Probably just in everything stockpile. For now. Except for stone. But everything else is fine and refuse and corpses. We'll store all of that right here. 
just to get everything inside. So the dwarves will now start hauling all of that. The miners here are going to start working on our up and down stairs shortly once they're done with the main part of this. Um, actually, I might as well just have them start working on that now. And the fortress is going to go down here. Uh, two rows. Oh, right there's my old staircase. Just to make sure I'm doing the right thing here. There we go. And I know we're going to want to go that off to the side with that too, but I want to be careful about it. So I don't uh, mess anything up. These only need to be uh, downstairs. All right, and we'll connect this like that. Same with the other one. That'll keep our mine uh, miners plenty busy getting all of that dealt with. We'll have more than they can handle. We'll probably have them start removing. I'll leave the uh, ramps for now, but we're gonna wanna start removing these ramps here. Eventually, so they don't become easy access for our, our enemies. All right, we can set up a zone. We'll make it a nice little uh, pen for us to put our animals, um, mainly our dog. We've got water buffaloes we brought with us as well. Um, I'll set up a separate pasture for them out here because they have to eat grass and such. But it's nice to have them in the front because believe it or not, they can save your colony. I've had them have, I've, I've been attacked early on and they've saved me. All right. Oh, I didn't assign. assign. No, I got it. Okay, perfect. Do we have an animal caretaker or anything? We've got some people that aren't doing anything. Animal care. Animal training, I'm not as worried about just yet, but let's do definitely do animal care. All right, and that's actually a pretty good amount of stairs here. Well, I actually forgot. I usually like to leave these centers open for... I like to leave these open usually for statues so dwarves see statues when they're passing by, but we can get we can get creative with that still. I, I There's other areas that I can put them. Let's uh, get some workshops going here. Just temporarily, we'll put a carpenter's workshop. And a mason's workshop out of rock salt. It's all we seem to have. All right, I think down below, I think this is gonna be birthing. This is gonna be workshops birthing. Unless, let's see, there's gonna be sand here actually. So maybe the kitchen area here, then workshops, then birthing all the way down. So this would make a really good kitchen slash hall area. Uh, we might be able to have farms because of the sand and the water source nearby, uh, right by the kitchen. So let me go ahead and set this up. Uh, more up and down stairs. Obviously, we can't do it here. But this will help us out like that. And just in case... Although I know it's not an issue. I don't want any up and downstairs actually here, any downstairs. 
because I'm probably going to build, uh, or I have intentions of building a drawbridge here, but eventually maybe even a drawbridge here and off to the other side. So I could contain enemies uh, certain ways. I might just open that up too. I haven't decided, but for now, I'm pretty sure I want to do it this way. There we go. It's a lot to mine out, but our dwarves seem to be plenty capable. And then down one more, like I said, is going to be birthing. So kitchen, workshops, birthing. So for the kitchen area, we're going to need a sort of uh, great hall here where the dwarves can eat and meet. And then an actual, actual kitchen workshop. Let's see. Well, that's fine for now. Actually, the I didn't set up the workshop area yet. No, okay. The workshop area I usually do a little bit differently. Nice. The animals are put exactly where they need to be and perfect. So we're going to go ahead and pause it and cut it off here since we're out of time. The beginning of our fortress is up and running. The rust breaking off the gears in my mind as I slowly relearn the game for the first time in over five years. I'm definitely excited to bring this one to you guys and I'm excited to play it. I think we're going to have a lot of fun even if it ends in complete and utter tragedy, tragedy such as not bringing an axe with us so we can chop wood down. That's a pretty dumb thing to uh, do. But no problem. We'll, you know, survive. We've got the trade caravan eventually showing up so we can buy a few items. We just got to make sure we make some stuff to be able to trade. Um, we'll hopefully have our kitchen up and running in the next episode, we'll get uh, some sort of craft area up running in a birthing area, and then we can start to turn this into a proper sort of entrance hall slash barracks. And we'll go for there. The miners will certainly be very busy. With that being said, uh, if you guys want to get your name in the game as a dwarf, next episode, I'll start adding some people in, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, try to get as many of you guys as I can into our colony uh, it'll be first come, first serve, so just go down below in the comment section. And leave a comment, say you want to be a dwarf, give me the name you want, maybe the particular type of dwarf you'd like to be, and I'll do my best to get as many of you guys in here as possible and keep as many of you alive as possible. Also, if this is your first time on my channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot, but it also helps you guys a lot because you get notified when new videos drop, which is every single day. With that being said, I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.